Garden with CJ. Tonight is going to be a JavaScript reading. Tonight's episode is You Don't Know JS, Up and Going, by Kyle Simpson. We'll start with the preface. I'm sure you noticed, but JS in the book series title is not an abbreviation for words used to curse about JavaScript. Though cursing at the language's quirks is something we can probably all identify with. From the earliest days of the web, JavaScript has been a foundational technology that drives interactive experience around the content we consume. While flickering mouse trails and annoying pop-up prompts may be where JavaScript started, nearly two decades later, the technology and capability of JavaScript has grown many orders of magnitude, and few doubt its importance at the heart of the world's most widely available software platform, the web. But as a language, it has perpetually been a target for a great deal of criticism, owing partly to its heritage, but even more to its design philosophy. Even the name evokes, as Brandon Icke once put it, dumb kid brother status next to its more mature older brother, Java. But the name is merely an accident of politics and marketing. The two languages are vastly different in many important ways. JavaScript is related to Java as Carnival is to Car. Because JavaScript borrows concepts and syntax idioms from several languages, including proud C-style procedural roots, as well as subtle, less obvious scheme list-style functional roots, it is exceedingly approachable to a broad audience of developers even those with just little to no programming experience. The hello world of JavaScript is so simple that the language is inviting and easy to get comfortable with in early exposure. While JavaScript is perhaps one of the easiest languages to get up and running with, its eccentricities make solid mastery of the language a vastly less common occurrence than in many other languages where it takes a pretty in-depth knowledge of a language like C or C++ to write a full-scale program, full-scale production JavaScript can, and often does, barely scratch the surface of what the language can do. Sophisticated concepts which are deeply rooted into the language tend to instead to surface themselves in seemingly simplistic ways, such as passing around functions as callbacks which encourages the JavaScript developer to use the language as is and not worry too much about what's going on under the hood. It is simultaneously a simple, easy to use language that has broad appeal and a complex nuanced collection of language mechanics, which can without, which, excuse me, which without careful study will elude true understanding, even for the most seasoned of JavaScript developers. Therein lies the paradox of JavaScript, the Achilles heel of the language, the challenge we are presently addressing. Because JavaScript can be used with understanding, with, without understanding, the understanding of the language is not, often never attained. Mission. If at every point that you encounter a surprise or frustration in JavaScript, your response is to aid is to add it to the blacklist, as some more are accustomed to doing. You soon will be relegated to a hollow shell of the richness of JavaScript. While this subset has been famously dubbed the good parts, I would implore you, dear reader, to instead consider it the easy parts, the safe parts, or even the incomplete parts. This You Don't Know JavaScript book series offers a, a contrary challenge. Learn and deeply understand all of JavaScript, even and especially the tough parts. Here we address head on the tendency of JavaScript developers to learn just enough to get by without ever forcing themselves to learn exactly how and why the language behaves the way it does. Furthermore, we eschew the common advice to retreat when the road gets tough, gets rough. I am not content nor should you be at stopping once something just works and not really knowing why. I gently challenge you to journey down that bumpy road less traveled and embrace all that JavaScript is and can do. With that knowledge, no technique, no framework, no popular buzzword acronym of the week will be beyond your understanding. 
these books each take on specific core parts of the language, which are most commonly must misunderstood or understood, and dive very deep and exhaustively into them. You should come away from reading with a firm confidence in your understanding, not just of the theoretical, but the practical, what you need to know bits. The JavaScript you know right now is probably parts handed down to you by others who've been burned by incomplete understanding. That JavaScript is but a shadow of the true language. You don't really know JavaScript yet, but if you dig into this series, you will. Read on, my friends. JavaScript awaits you. Summary. JavaScript is awesome. It's easy to learn partially and much harder to learn completely or even sufficiently. When developers encounter confusion, they usually blame the language instead of their lack of understanding. This book's aim to fix that, inspiring a strong appreciation for the language you can know and should deeply know. Note, many of the examples in this book assume modern or future reaching JavaScript engine environments, such as ES6. Some code may not work as described if run in older pre-ES6 engines. That was the preface. Let's move on to chapter one. Intro into programming. Chapter 1, Into Programming. Welcome to the You Don't Know JS, YDKJS series. Up and Going is an introduction to several basics of programming. Of course, we lean towards JavaScript, often abbreviated JS, specifically, and how to approach and understand the rest of the titles in the series, especially if you're just getting into programming and or JavaScript. This book will briefly explore what you need to get up and going. This book starts off explaining the basic principles of programming at a very high level. It's mostly intended if you are starting YDKJS with little to no prior programming experience, and are looking to these books to help you get started along a path to understanding programming through the lens of JavaScript. Chapter one should be approached as a quick overview of the things you'll want to learn more about and practice to get into programming. There are also many other fantastic programming introduction resources that can help you, help you dig into these topics further. And I encourage you to learn from them in addition to this chapter. Once you feel comfortable with general programming basics, chapter two will help guide you to a familiarity with JavaScript's flavor of programming. Chapter two introduces what JavaScript is about, but again, it's not a comprehensive guide. That's what the rest of the YDKJS books are for. If you're already fairly comfortable with JavaScript, first check out, check out chapter three as a brief glimpse of what to expect, expect from YDKJS, then jump right in. Code. Let's start from the beginning. A program, often referred to as source code or just code, is a set of special instructions to tell the computer what tasks to perform. Usually code is saved in a text file Although with JavaScript, you can also type code directly into a developer console in a browser, which we'll cover shortly. The rules for valid format and combination of instructions is called a computer language, sometimes referred to as its syntax. Much the same as English tells you how to spell words and how to create valid sentences using words and punctuation. Statements. In a computer language, a group of words, numbers, and operators that performs a specific task is a statement. In JavaScript, a statement might look as follows. A equals B times two. The characters A and B are called variables, see the variables section, which are like simple boxes you can store any of your stuff in. In programs, variables hold values, like the number 42, to be used by the program. Think of them as symbolic placeholders for the values themselves. By contrast, the two is just a value itself, called a literal value, because it stands alone without being stored in a variable. The equals and times characters are operators. See the operator section. They perform actions with the values and variables, such as assignment and mathematical multiplication. 
Most statements in JavaScript conclude with a semicolon at the end. The statement a equals b times 2 tells the computer, roughly, to get the current value stored in the variable b, multiply that value by 2, then store the result back into another variable we call a. Pro programs are just collections of many such statements, which together describe all the steps that it takes to perform your program's purpose. Expressions. Statements are made up of one or more expressions. An expression is any reference to a variable or value, or a set of variables and values combined with operators. For example, a times b, oh, a equals b times 2. This statement has four expressions in it. 2 is a literal value expression. b is a variable expression, which means to retrieve its current value. b times 2 is an arithmetic expression, which means to do the multiplication. And a equals b times 2 is an assignment expression which means to assign the result of the b times 2 expression to the variable a. More on assignments later. A general expression that stands alone is called an expression statement, such as the following, b times 2. This flavor of expression statement is not very common or useful, as generally it wouldn't have any effect on the running of the program. It would retrieve the value of b and multiply it by 2, but then wouldn't do anything with that result. A more common expression statement is a call expression statement, C functions, as the entire statement is the function call expression itself. Alert invoked with the parameter A. Executing a program. How do those collections of programming statements tell the computer what to do? The program needs to be executed, also referred to as running the program. Statements like a equals b times 2 are helpful for developers when reading and writing, but are not actually in a form the computer can directly understand. So a special utility on the computer, either an interpreter or a compiler, is used to translate the code you write into commands a computer can understand. For some computer languages, this translation of commands is typically done from top to bottom, line by line, every time the program is run, which is usually called interpreting the code. For other languages, the translation is done ahead of time, called compiling the code. So when the program runs later, what's running is actually the already compiled computer instructions ready to go. It's typically asserted that JavaScript is interpreted because your JavaScript source code is processed each time it's run. But that's not entirely accurate. The JavaScript engine actually compiles the program on the fly, then immediately runs the compiled code. Note, for more information on JavaScript comp compiling, see the first two chapters of the scope and closures title of this series. Try it yourself. This chapter is going to introduce each program programming concept with simple snippets of code, all written in JavaScript, obviously. It cannot be emphasized enough. While you go through this chapter, you may need to spend the time to go over it several times. You should practice each of these concepts by typing the code yourself. The easiest way to do that is to open up the developer tools console in your nearest browser, Firefox, Chrome, IE, etc. Tip. Typically, you can launch the developer console with a keyboard shortcut or from a menu item. For more detailed information about launching and using the console in your favorite browser, see Mastering the Developer Tools console. To type multiple lines into the console at once, use Shift-Enter to move to the next line. Once you hit Enter by itself, the console will run everything you've just typed. Let's get familiar with the process of running code in the console. First, I suggest opening up an empty tab in your browser. I prefer to do this by typing about blank into the address bar. Then, Make sure your developer console is open, as we just mentioned. Now type this code and see how it runs. a equals 21, b equals a times 2, console.log invoked with the parameter b. 
typing the preceding code into the console in Chrome should produce something like the following. A equals 21, B equals A times 2, console.log invoked with the parameter B, 42, undefined. Go on, try it. The best way to learn programming is to start coding. Output. In the previous code snippet, we used console.log. Briefly, let's look at what that line of code is all about. You may have guessed, but that's exactly how we print text, aka output, to the user in the developer console. There are two characteristics of that statement that we should explain. First, the log invoked with B part is referred to as a function call, C functions. What's happening is we're handing the B variable to that function, which asked it to take the value of B and print it to the console. Second, the console part is an object reference where log, where the log function is located. We cover objects and their properties in more detail in chapter two. Another way of creating output that you can see is to run an alert statement. For example, alert invoked with the parameter B. If you run that, you'll notice that instead of printing the output to the console, it shows a pop-up OK box with the contents of the B variable. However, using console.log is generally going to make learning about coding and running your programs in the console easier than using alert because you can output many values at once without interpreting the browser interface. For this book, we'll use console.log for output. Input. While we're discussing output, you may also wonder about input, i.e. receiving information from the user. The most common way that happens is for the HTML page to show form elements, like text boxes, to a user that they can type into and then use using JS to read those values into your program's variables. But there's an easier way to get input for simple learning and demonstration purposes, such as what we'll be doing throughout this book, using the prompt function. Age equals prompt invoked with the string, please tell me your age. Console.log invoked with the age variable. As you may have guessed, the message you pass in to prompt, in this case, please tell me your age, is printed into the pop-up. It should look similar to the following. Once you submit the input text by clicking OK, you'll observe that the value you typed is stored in the age variable, which we then output with console.log. To keep things simple while learning basic programming concepts, the examples in this book will not require input, but now that you've seen how to use prompt, if you want to challenge yourself, you can try to use input in your explorations of these examples. Operators. Operators are how we perform actions on variables and values. We've already seen two JavaScript operators, the equal sign and the multiplication sign. The multiplication operator performs mathematic multiplication. Simple enough, right? The equals operator is used for assignment. We first calculate the value on the right-hand side, the source value, of the equal, and then put it into the variable that we specify on the left-hand side, the target variable. Warning, this may seem like a strange reverse order to specify assignment. Instead of A equals 42, some might prefer to flip the order. So the source value is on the left, and the target is on the right, like 42 points to A. This is not valid JavaScript. Unfortunately, the A equals 42 order form and similar variations is quite prevalent in modern programming languages. If it feels unnatural, just spend some time rehearsing that ordering in your mind to get accustomed to it. Consider A equals 2, B equals A plus 1. Here, we assign the two value to the A variable. Then, we get the value of the A variable, still two, add one to it, to it, resulting in the value three. Then store that value in the B variable. While not technically an operator, you'll need the keyword var in every program, as it's the primary way you declare, aka create, variables. See the variables section. 
you should always declare the variable by name before you use it. If you only need to declare a variable once for each scope, uh, but, sorry, but you only need to declare a variable once for each scope, it can be used as many times after that as needed. For example, var a equals 20, a equals a plus 1, a equals a times 2, console.log a. Here's some of the, of the most common operators in JavaScript. Assignment, the equal sign, as in a equals 2. Math, the plus sign for addition, the minus sign for subtraction, the multiplication sign for multiplication, the forward slash for division, um, as in a times 3. Compound assignment, plus equals, minus equals, times equals, divide equals, are common operators that combine a math operation with assignment, as in a plus equals 2, the same as a equals a plus 2. Increment and decrement, plus plus increments, minus minus decrements, as in a plus 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 a plus plus, which is similar to a equals a plus one. Object property access, dot, as in console dot log. Objects are values that hold other values at specific named locations called properties. Obj dot a means an object value called obj with the property of the name a. Properties can alternatively be accessed as obj, open bracket, the string a, close bracket. See chapter two. Equality, double equals is loose equals, triple equals is strict equals, exclamation mark equals is loose not equals, exclamation mark equals equals is strict not equals, as in a equal equals b. See values and types in chapter two. Comparison. The less than sign is less than, the greater than sign is greater than, less than followed by an equal sign, less than or loose equals, greater than followed by an equal sign, greater than or loose equals, as in a less than or equal to b. See values and types and chapter two. Logical. Ampersand ampersand is and. Pipe pipe is the or, as in a or b. That selects either a or b. These operators are used to express compound conditionals. See conditionals like if either a or b is true. Note, for much more detail, a coverage of operators not mentioned here, see the Mozilla Developer Network, Indians, Expressions and Operators page. Values and Types If you ask an employee at a phone store how much a certain phone costs, and they say 99, 99, i.e. $99.99, they're giving you an actual numeric dollar figure that represents what you'll need to pay, plus taxes to buy it. If you want to buy two of those phones, you can easily do the mental math to double that value to get $199.98 for your base cost. If that same employee picks up another similar phone, but says it's free, perhaps with air quotes, they're not giving you a number, but instead another kind of representation of your expected cost. zero dollars or the word free. When you later ask if the phone includes a charger, that answer could only have been either yes or no. In very similar ways, when you express values in a program, you choose different representations for those values based on what you plan to do with them. These different representations for values are called types in programming terminology. JavaScript has built-in types for each of these so-called primitive values. When you need to do math, you want a number. When you need to print a value on the screen, you need a string, one or more characters, words, or sentences. When you need to make a decision in your program, you need a boolean, true or false. 
Values that are included directly in the source code are called literals. String literals are surrounded by double quotes, or single quotes. The only difference is stylistic preference. Number and Boolean literals are just represented as 42, true, etc. Considered. I am a string in double quotes. I am also a string in single quotes. The number 42. True. False. Beyond string, number, and Boolean value types, it's common for programming languages to provide arrays, objects, functions, and more. We'll cover much more about values and types throughout this chapter and the next. Converting between types. If you had a number, but need to print it on the screen, you need to convert the value to a string. And in JavaScript, this conversion is called coercion. Similarly, if someone enters a series of numeric characters into a form on an e-commerce page, that's a string. But if you need to then use that value to do math operations, you need to coerce to a number. JavaScript provides several different facilities for forcibly coercing between types. For example, var a equals the string 42, var b equals the number constructor invoked with the a variable, console.log invoked with the a variable prints the 42 string, console.log invoked with the b variable prints the number 42. Using number, a built-in function as shown in uh, is, excuse me, using number, a built-in function as shown is an explicit coercion from any other type to the number type. That should be pretty straightforward. But a controversial topic is what happens when you try to compare two values that are not already of the same type, which would require implicit coercion. When con comparing the string 99.99 .99 to the number 99.99, .99, most people would agree that they are equivalent. But they're not exactly the same, are they? It's the same value in two different representations, two different types. You could say they're loosely equal, couldn't you? To help you out in these common situations, JavaScript will sometimes kick in and implicitly coerce values to the matching types. If you use the double equal loose equals operator to make the comparison, the string 9999 double equals the number 9999, JavaScript will convert the left hand side 99 0.99 the string to its number equivalent 99.99 and this comparison then becomes the number 99.99 is equal to 99.99 which is of course true. While designed to help you, implicit coercion can create confusion if you haven't taken the time to learn the rules that govern its behavior. Most JS developers never have, so the common feeling is that implicit coercion is confusing and harms programs with unexpected bugs, and should thus be avoided. It's even sometimes called a flaw in the design of the language. However, implicit coercion is a mechanism that can be learned, and moreover, should be learned by anyone wishing to take JavaScript programming seriously. Not only is it not confusing once you learn the rules, it can actually make your programs better. The effort is well worth it. Note, for more information on coercion, see chapter two of this title and chapter four of the types and grammar title of this series. I've been reading for about 29 minutes, so I think I'm gonna end it there for tonight's bedtime JavaScript reading. Tune in tomorrow where I'll continue off with the code comments section on chapter one of You Don't Know JavaScript, Up and Going by Kyle Simpson. Thanks for watching.